Hi, this is Jamie from Digital Arts Front and Color Distortion. Um, in my last tutorial, I covered blending colors and how to the basics of painting in Photoshop. And so what I wanted to do was give you an actual example and give you a tu an exercise that you could all do on your own um, and have a bit of a practice learning the, using the skills you learned in the last video and putting it into practice in this video. So what you can see here is I have um, an apple, a picture of an apple in the corner here, and that will be my reference. And here you'll see a sketch. And over here you'll see some colors. So I'll quickly go through and explain what's happening here. Um, I'll just open up the layers palette, which I've moved over here for convenience. Um, so you'll see that we have a background layer, which is the white layer. We have a reference, which is the apple. And we have a sketch sketch and color pal. And pal stands for palette. So essentially what I've done with the sketch here, and it's a little bit different to what you might normally expect from a sketch, is that all I've done is I've just blocked out the basic forms and shapes in the apple. So you'll see here I've got the center of the apple with the core, the stem, here are the three highlights that you see here, here, and here. And over here is the little the little highlight and crease that you'll see in the side of the apple there with some kind of indentation. Down here is the main body, and over here is where it starts to become a little lighter as it, the white bounces from the uh, table that it's sitting on. And here is the shadow. Now. When you're painting, I would recommend you can you can do it however you want. You could paint, you could sketch a, a picture of an apple by hand on paper, scan it in, and then use that as as your basis for your painting. Um, you could do a really high detailed sketch with all sorts of shading and things like that, and that's fine, and you can do that. Um, but I find that it's ultimately a waste of time because you're going to end up painting over the top of it. So what I've done is I've just blocked in the basic shapes and forms so that we can start to paint. And over here, <coughs> we have P and S. Now, these are not artistic terms that I'm quoting here, but um, P is what I'm using as primary. So primary is this red, this green, this pinkish color, and this brownish color. Now, the red is for this sort of apple area up here, the darker sort of ready, brighter red area at the top. The green is for the center of the apple, and the majority of the center of the apple is sort of around that green. The pink is for this lower body, the main body of the apple, and the brown is for the stem. Now they're the basic colors, and in the last video I showed you with the sphere, you could paint a blue sphere using three different shades of blue. But this is a more practical example. So we've had to look at the apple and sort of choose colors based on that. So you could paint this apple with these, these four primary colors quite easily. We also have white, but we don't need to put that down. It's pretty easily accessible color. But here you have the secondary colors, and this is what would make your apple look more realistic. This is where you start to get into detailing. This is where things, shading and blending, starts to become more important. So this pinky tone here is what you might see around this area of the apple, and here the little highlights in the apple, in the flesh tones of the apple. Um, this green is the darker green in the center there. This brownish color is the sort of low, this brownish pinky color. It's the sort of lower areas here where it starts to darken up a little bit. And this darker brown is for the tip of the stem there. And it's those things, adding those extra colors, those secondary colors are what's really going to give you the detail. So what I wanted to do first was just cover what the basic setup is here. I'm going to provide this as a PSD for you all to download. So um, just look in the sidebar and you'll find the link. And you can all have a go at this at home. So that's part one. And when we come back, I'm going to start blocking in color. OK, so now we understand the basic setup. We're going to start blocking in some color. Firstly, what we want to do is add a new layer by clicking this button here. We'll call it color layer. And next, what we want to do is start blocking in our primary colors. So I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. Um, you can do that, by the way, with the bracket keys, or you can do it from the menu up here, which is just off the screen. Um, <coughs> so what we'll do first is we'll just pick, use our color picker, which again is the Alt key, or you can choose it from down here. And we'll pick this, this ready tone up here. And what we'll do is we'll start just putting that down. And it really is at this point, it's just paint by numbers, you know, and this is why I do the sketch the way I do, because you can really just sort of block in some really basic color, you know where the colors are supposed to be, you know, you've, you've color matched, and I will make a video on how to color match later on, um, so that you can, you know, accurately get the colors from a reference and try and replicate that photograph. But for now, it's just a matter of choosing your colors and painting by numbers, and this, this is really the... <clears throat> the relaxing part of art. When you get into the more detailed bits, it starts to get a little bit more stressful, but um, for now, just sort of relax and start painting in those colors. 
Um, and don't worry too much about, you know, painting over the lines or going outside of the canvas, uh, you know, y you can, you can fix those things later. Just for now, just block in those colors and don't worry too much about getting detail and try and keep your brush big. Um, at this stage, you don't want your brush getting too small because you will start getting finicky and start putting in details that really don't need to be there yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and, um, pause the video and then when I come back, I'll have blocked in the colors and we'll continue from there. Okay. So I've blocked in my primary colors and now it's time to start adding the secondary colors and blending everything together. As you can see, it's quite rudimentary at this stage and it's not looking very impressive and not hugely like an apple. <laughs> so what we need to do is start bringing the secondary colors and using the blending techniques that I taught you in the previous video that I made. So what I'm going to do, I've already started doing a little bit here as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I've lowered my opacity to 60 by pressing the 6 key or you can do it from up here where it says opacity. It's just off the screen there. Um, and that's just to give me a little bit more control. And so I'm going to use the same technique I used in my previous video where you pick up the color using the Alt key, um, which you can, you know, hit the Alt key or you can use the color picker here. Um, and I'll pick up this color and I'll just start lightly pressing it down. And with this white, you know, it, it needs to be a little softer. Um, and so I'll just start sort of softening that white there and blending these colors here and just sort of blending that pink in a little bit more. And just picking up those colors and putting them down and picking them up and putting them down. And, that, and that's just the same technique I showed you in the previous video. If you haven't seen that, I'll post a link up um, in the description box so that you can go and check that out. And um, yeah, and we're just starting to blend these colors together now. And we're starting to get that, that pink tone blending into the darker red tone. And it really is just that simple. It's, it's the same as the previous video. You just sort of start blending them all together. It takes a while. Um, you have to be patient. Um, but you kind of zone out after a while and you just sort of relax and go with it and it's kind of cool. Um, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm starting to blend everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and when I come back, hopefully I'll have managed to blend this reasonably well and we'll have something that looks a little bit more like an apple. Okay, so we've got some blending happening now. We've started to blend our colors together. Things are starting to look a little bit more like an apple. You can see that I've blended most of these tones together now. It's still not perfect. It's still quite rough. But you'll see up here where I've started to draw these sort of pink highlights in the apple. Um, this is the next stage. The next stage is going in there and just getting more detailed, making the brush smaller, going in there, looking at the apple in more detail. So, for example, up here, you can see that these strokes, they, they, they flow in this sort of direction. And immediately, you can see that it's starting to look a lot more like an apple 